Father, we lift your name up high, for there is nothing you cannot do, for there is nothing too hard for you. Who is God like unto thee? A rock and a refuge are you. We bless your name, we exalt you, we bow before you. There is nothing, my God. Say there is nothing my God cannot do. Oh, there is nothing, my God cannot do. No matter what you are going through, just pour before Him. There is nothing, my God cannot do. The great I am, the great I am. There is nothing, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise. We give God praise once again for the opportunity to come into his presence. Welcome to Midday Springs. And we, we bless God for how far he's, he's carried us. We are looking at Psalm 119 and today we're looking at 89 to 96. Psalm 119, 89 to 
96. Ferguson, you want to read for us? Shall we hear the word of the Lord? Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endureth to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinance, for all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precept, for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me. For I have sought your precept. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Amen. Amen. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. Settled. It's not under debate. It is not subject to amendment. No one is going to review it. It is settled. It is settled in the heavens that rule over the earth. It is settled. It does not change. It is over and above that which humans can temper with. Your word is settled. It is not like the word. It is not like that, that document. It is not like that docket that some people can take and hide them. You know, sometimes you your case is almost ending. You are winning. Then one day they go to court, they can't find your docket. The case is hanging because some human beings can hold that. But your word is settled in the heavens. Forever. Not for a season. And, and it gives you reason why you can trust that word. You can hold on to that word. It is settled. It is settled. Then he says, your faithfulness and just to all generation, you have established the earth and it abides. Because that word is settled in the heavens and it cannot be altered. Whatever he said will happen. And so it makes God faithful. And because the word is settled forever, the faithfulness too is forever. Great is that faithfulness. And so, he, by that word which abides forever, he, he commanded the world and everything in it and they abide. And because that word abides, that the earth abides. And he says that they abide and in verse 91, he says they continue to this day according to your ordinance just as you commanded them to be. That's why a songwriter said who taught the moon where to hide till the morning? Who commanded the sea? This is your boundary. Who told the wild animals in the bush, don't come into the dwelling of men, the habitations of men? Who, who gave them the boundaries? The word of God has spoken. And now to today, they abide. Ah, I love that one. You can trust that word. You can lean on that word. You know, the psalmist have said somewhere that those who trust the Lord, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Mount Zion had contemporary mountains that are no longer because earth had quaked and those mountains have shaken and, and they have disappeared. The weather have caused them to disappear. Zion stands still. So he said, those who trust in the Lord, those who trust in his word, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. The word Command, the Lord commanded his word and the earth came into being and because they are sustained by the word and the word abides forever what God's word commanded also abides and I love what he said they continue to this day according to your ordinance why? because they are all your servants and let me pause here a little bit anything you encounter on this planet is a servant of God or maybe you are not getting it <laughs> When someone says that I will curse you by that river, that river is a servant of God. Your God, I mean. When someone says that I will command the moon and the stars and I will speak to some heavenly beings and, and those things, they are servants of God. 
When somebody said that I will call some gods and some idols and I will do some things, they are servants of God. <laughs> there is nothing on this planet that will not obey God when God speaks. Nothing will do according to their own will against what God has said. When God speaks, everything on the planet obeys. They are all servants of God. The other time, the, 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 the disciples encountered Jesus. When the storm arose on the Sea of Galilee. And the Bible said that when they are struggling and struggling and struggled, and nothing had changed, the Bible said they went and they called Jesus, who was sleeping on the cushion. Oh, Jesus. He was sleeping on the cushion. In the midst of chaos, when people felt that all of them in the boat were going to die and they were struggling and they were doing everything, someone was sleeping in, on a cushion. The Bible said when they woke him up, he rebuked the sea. He rebuked the waves and obeyed. And they marveled and they said, what manner of man is this? For even the wind, the storms, they obey. Because what? They are servants. So when the psalmist in Psalm 91 says that the, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night, only the all come because he knows that they are servant of his God. They are servant of his God. They are servant of his God. When his God speaks, they obey. Then in 92, he said, unless your law had been my delight. In other words, if your law had not been my delight, I would have been perished in my affliction. And you was seven and you couldn't wear I come and say, and you was seven and you couldn't, you was seven and you couldn't, you was seven and me pa, you was seven and you fed, you was seven and you da, and you was seven and you want to swap. And can you? So you see, what we are saying is that get into the word, love the word, love the word. You, you, if, if, if you think you are struggling, just, just start with one verse a day. But just, just meditate on it. And see how God begins to open pores. Pores. In your mind, he opens them up and darkness disappears and, and light fills there. Then you begin to realize that you are now walking in the light of life. No longer in darkness. Why? Because you only meditate on his word. He said something, I love it. He says, I will never forget your precepts. For by them, you have given me life. Hey, we have said it. Your life is in the word. Your life is inside there. He says that you, I love it. And I will never forget them. Because for by the word, by your precepts, by your testimonies, by your law, you give me life. My life is in the law. I will chase after it. I will not trust the wisdom of men. They may be enticing, but I will not trust them. And sometimes when I hear some of them, they can shake me. Say, hmm. Akweya can say more. Only to relax quietly and realize that mm -mm, it is not in line with God's word. The Lord has not said so. The Lord has not said so. Hey, I will not forget your law. I will not forget your precepts. I will not forget your commandment. I will not forget your word. For by them, by your word, you give me life. Did you hear that? So by neglecting them, you are neglecting life. Then he ends by saying, I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your word is broad. <laughs> you will be a trap perfection, so it is the word. <laughs> what have I not seen before? But your word exceeds your word. It's about beloved. I want to encourage you. It's all about the word. Get deeper, root yourself. Hold on to it, for by them, God gives you life. Shall we pray?
Thank you, Father. Santa Beloved, the word says that forever, O Lord, your word is certain. You are crying to the Lord. Every area of your life, you have been told that our life is in the word. So every area of your life, as much as you apply the word, it is settled. All you need to do is go into the world and look for that word, for that issue. It is already settled. You want to cry to the Lord, Lord, as I open your word, as I go deeper into the word, may you open my eye, that I'll see your word for me, for every issue that I'm facing in my life right now. Show me that word, that I'll settle it in my spirit. Lift up your voice and cry to the Lord. Lift up your voice and cry to the Lord. I am fire. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus. Beloved, you want to pray and cry to the Lord. That Lord, I believe in your word. And your word is faithful. Grant me grace, Lord, to continue to trust in your word. Because it is faithful to all generations. That which you have said concerning my life will certainly come to pass. You want to cry to the Lord, grant me grace to hold on to the word. Grant me grace to hold on to your word. That, Lord, I will walk with it. That your blessings will be my portion. Lift up your voice and cry to the Lord. Lift up your voice and cry to the Lord. I am faithful. His faithfulness of God abound from generation to generation. I am faithful, Beloved, I want to pray and tell the Lord that it should grant you grace never to forget his word. 
See, when you open the Bible and you read and you meditate, he has a word for you for every season of your life that you enter. And you need to keep that word in your spirit so that when the season comes, you can get that word to meet that need. You are praying and tell Lord, grant me grace never to forget your word. But because it is that which preserves me, it is that which gives me life. And you have been told that our life is in the word. Therefore, Lord, grant me grace never to forget the word. May I hold on to it. May I walk with it. Lift up your voice and cry to the Lord. Can't you write it? I did do that Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we want to thank you. We are grateful, Lord, that you've given us your word in which we find life. Mm. We ask that, Lord, may you grant us grace, Lord, thank you. that we'll hold on to the word. We'll hold on to the word. We'll never forget, Lord, that we'll walk with it, Lord, that you'll fulfill your word concerning our lives. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen.